there's something striking about the Amsterdam offices of chocolate company Tony's Chocolate Only, the tables and bikes outside, the floors, envelopes, and shipping boxes inside. Red balloons. Virtually everything is fire engine red. It's partly the playful nature of the growing company where employees all have fanciful titles like Impact is Prime, Inspire to Actress, and The Boss. So I hate to be called CEO. I just want to be the chief chocolate officer. But the color also serves a serious purpose. The real color of alarm is red. And if you really want to point out that there is a problem and that something has to be done, you have to use the color of red. These are the kids. The problem, children working illegally in the supply chain of cocoa. And if you realize kids are actually producing the chocolate that we love, then you have to feel something needs to change. Tony's has a goal to make chocolate what they call 100% slave free. Not just their chocolate, all chocolate. Our goal is to eradicate all illegal labor from the value chain of cocoa. That is quite an ambitious uh, mission for a small company that we are, but um, we are very serious about it. And it is a serious problem. According to a recent report, in the cocoa growing areas of Ghana and Ivory Coast, where most of the beans used to make the world's chocolate come from, almost half of the children work as child laborers. That's more than one and a half million children. Most are doing what's termed hazardous work involving sharp tools, heavy loads, or toxic pesticides. It's all part of the laborious process of separating beans from the large cocoa pods pulled from trees. If the child is working on a weekend, for example, helping the parents, that's not child labor, that's child work. But if they're missing school, or if they're doing work that is detrimental to their health, that is child labor. Nagoy Nyong'o is the global CEO of Fair Trade International, which certifies ethical practices of products around the world. Cocoa is its flagship issue. Nyong'o says the price is basically controlled by a handful of large chocolate conglomerates who pay farmers very little. Families who can't afford to hire workers are using their children instead. It's about not earning a living income. It's about farmers struggling, but not getting the returns that they should get from the products that they grow. The worst forms of child labor, when children are trafficked and forced to work without pay. That's what police in Ivory Coast were after in this raid on a cocoa farm last year. According to one study, as many as 16,000 children in West Africa are being exploited this way. Although child labor is not unique to cocoa, the fact that chocolate is a luxury product, a more than $100 billion a year business when most cocoa farmers live below the poverty line, is what struck Dutch journalist Ton van de Koken as particularly outrageous. He was even filmed for a television program trying to get himself prosecuted, arguing that by eating chocolate, he was complicit in a crime. In 2005, he co-founded Tony's Chocolate Lonely, a combination of his first name and what he called the lonely battle to reform the chocolate industry. But on the inside, the messaging includes the uneven see. way the bars are divided. Sometimes you have a big piece, like the big chocolate companies, and sometimes you only get a very small piece, just like the cocoa farmers get so little of the value of, uh, of chocolate. While Tony's isn't the only chocolate company touting its ethical practices, it's arguably one of the most successful. What started off in a whimsical way with just 5,000 chocolate bars is now the most popular chocolate brand in the Netherlands with about $100 million in revenue last year. And the company is expanding into markets around the world, including the United States. Key to Tony's strategy is traceability. Cocoa beans in West Africa come from thousands of small farms and pass through many hands. Most big chocolate companies admit they don't know where all their beans come from. Tony's, on the other hand, has long-term relationships with specific cooperatives. My Tony's title is Lean the Supply Chain Machine. <laughs> and it's even developed its own online software to track every bag of beans by lot number. Uh, and we can trace back which farmers have supplied the beans into that one lot number. It gives us visibility on traceability, basically. And Tony's pays premiums to help farmers modernize and get out of poverty. In Ivory Coast, for example, Tony's is now paying about 68% more than the minimum price set by the government. And that contributes to making the chocolate more expensive. In the U.S., this bar is a little under $5, uh, uh, dollars, and uh, this bar would have costed 
let's say 350 if we were uh, paying the lowest possible price to farmers. But we don't pay the lowest possible price to farmers, we pay a digni dignified price that brings them to living income. This problem is not exactly new. The chocolate industry has been under fire for years. Back in 2001, after the U.S. Congress threatened legislation to address child labor and cocoa, eight of the biggest chocolate companies negotiated a voluntary agreement instead, pledging to eradicate the worst forms of child labor and cocoa by 2005. That deadline and others in 2008, 2010, and 2020 came and went. Now they say they're committed to a new deadline, 2025. And if you look at some of the big chocolate company websites like Mars, Nestle, or Hershey, the issue is front and center. They talk about protecting children with big investments in local communities, working with families to get kids back into school, and increasing child labor monitoring programs. But still, the number of child laborers in West Africa hasn't changed much over the years. And as of today, only about 25% of the supply chain is even being monitored for child labor. The aim is to increase those programs. Alexander Ferguson is with the World Cocoa Foundation, a trade group that represents about 80% of the chocolate industry. A lot of the big chocolate companies have programs to crack down on child labor. Are those programs going far enough? I think the mistake made in the past is that companies thought they could solve this alone. Many of our companies do have supply lines that are traceable and look for child labor and then also pay premiums uh, to farmers so that they get a higher income. Um, I, I mean, the, this is something that is being done um, across the industry, um, is, is, you know, and there needs to be more of it. So some companies could be doing very well. Some companies are not doing anything because all this is voluntary. And for years, for about 20 years, we've had a lot of these voluntary initiatives that have really made little, um, little difference, I must say. And I think when it becomes compulsory that companies have to be responsible for what happens in their supply chain, I think that's where we'll really make an impact. Tony's agrees laws are needed. Its most recent lobbying effort, a petition to the EU, signed by more than 66,000 of its Choco fans, supporting a law that would hold all companies accountable for their supply chains. We have to look for problems in the supply chain in order to uh, solve them. So it's about putting the problems towards us uh, instead of pushing them away. And Tony's does find problems, cases of child labor among its farmer cooperatives. When it does, says impact navigator Pavithra Ram, local monitors track everyone and work to get children out of danger or into school. Other chocolate companies also use some sort of the child labor monitoring system. What makes us unique is that we implement it for 100% of our supply chain. So you can't just go to some communities or a part of your supply chain and say, oh, we, we're monitoring there, we found cases. You need to do it for your entire um, supply chain because otherwise it's, you're, you're not doing enough. Tony's efforts have won over at least one major ally, Barry Calibo, the biggest chocolate manufacturer in the world. I think Tony's is really a pioneer and also a leader and a front runner. Barry Calibo produces chocolate for brands around the world, turning beans into liquid, a key part of the chocolate making process. Tony's convinced the company to use separate tanks to segregate its beans to preserve the integrity of its supply chain. And that was a hard sell at first. It was not easy. Investments had to be done. Cost of production would not be as efficient. But some of us believed in it, and we convinced the board to do the investments. And I'm very happy we did. Tony's Chocolate Only believes in sharing. Now Tony's is working with Barry Calibote to get other brands to adopt its core principles like giving farmers more support and pay and offering to share its network of farmer cooperatives and bean tracker software in a program it calls Tony's Open Chain. The goal is to really make it easy for chocolate brands to um, plug into a proven and working cocoa flow. So far, three competitors have joined, including Aldi, and the largest supermarket chain in the Netherlands with its Delicata chocolate brand. But can Tony's really make a difference? Critics point out the company is still relatively small, 
working with only about 0.5 percent of the some 1.6 million cocoa farmers in West Africa. And one watchdog group has removed Tony's from its slave-free chocolate list because its production partner, Barry Calibo, can't guarantee that all of the beans from its many other customers are 100 percent traceable. So the team is growing and growing. But Tony's CCO Beltman is unapologetic. He says the partnership with the chocolate giant is part of a dual strategy to lead by example and reform from within. If you want to make impact at scale, you have to work with a player that is, that is producing at scale. And sometimes we have a feeling that, that the task that we take are taking on our shoulders is rather big. Um, but with a little bit of naivety and arrogance, uh, we can uh, uh, do a lot. And they are becoming really a big brand. And if you see how small brands are becoming disruptive, that's a bit the name of the game. What started a bit as a joke with an important message is now a, a big company. And potentially Tony's will, will be bigger than Barry Calaboats five years from now. You never know what happens in this disruptive world.